and 450. We'd just like to thank you guys for coming to our final presentation. I'd like to extend a welcome to Jeff Hanna, who has given us some feedback on our game. Uh, he was here from Volition Incorporated. And uh, Jeff Rollins, who is a, our sponsor from uh, Purdue Exhibit Design Center. And just want to thank you guys for coming, and one and all, all you guys for coming to our final presentation. And we would like to now introduce our group. And we'll start off. My name is Daniel Moore. I am a senior in computer graphics technology. We'll be graduating next week. And I have an area of focus in virtual product integration, and also have a minor in management with an accounting focus. I'm Michael Bush. I also have a focus in virtual product integration, um, but I'm getting a minor in computer science. Okay. I'm Peter Altide. I'll also be graduating next week, and my focus is in game design and theory. I'm Reed Perigo. I am also graduating next uh, week with a focus in animation. I am getting a minor in art design. My name is Jeremy Nelson. I am a senior in computer graphics technology. I'm also pursuing an associate's degree in organizational leadership and supervision and a minor in computer information technology. Now that we've introduced ourselves, I'd like to elaborate more on our sponsor. Our sponsor is Purdue's Exhibit Design Center, or otherwise known as the EDC. The EDC designs and builds traveling exhibits for children. The exhibits the Exhibit Design Center creates are focused on bringing cutting edge science and technology to life for audiences of all ages. The MyPlate exhibit is one uh, such exhibit. The MyPlate exhibit was sponsored by the American Dairy Association to promote healthy food choices in children through awareness of the USDA MyPlay program. The USDA Max the Human and Munch the Dog, as you can see here, are the cartoonish main characters of the MyPlay exhibit. They are heavily featured in the exhibit and in our interactive. The USDA MyPlay program was introduced in 2011 to replace the food pyramid which was considered too complex. The goal of my plate was to create a simpler model, a simpler model for healthy eating. The visual representation of a plate as the basis of my plate was designed to be intuitive and easy to understand. Now that we've talked a little bit about our product, I'd like or our uh, our sponsor, I'd like to pass it off to Dan, who's going to talk about our research. So at the beginning of the semester, Jeff Rollins, our sponsor, brought us a problem a problem with. Design Center. And that problem was the EDC had perceived a need for more interaction in a part of their MyPlate exhibit and desired to enhance it in such a way that health and nutrition knowledge is reinforced for the participants. Now a key word within that problem statement is interaction. We define interaction as communication involving multiple senses where input and output is given by both the participant and the exhibit. And this was based off of a definition by D. Myers in the book, The Nature of Computer Games, which states, formal definitions of interactivity focus on mechanical, observable behaviors associated with stimulus response pairs. For instance, a computer game is considered interactive if the game elicits a variety of player responses and if that game responds in kind to player input. Now the players for our game, in our case, would be children who are in pre-K through 8 who have been the majority of the population that has been involved in interacting with the MyPlate exhibit in the past. Now, another key word within our problem statement is the word reinforced. A study by Donko McGee, uh, which was comprised of multiple demographics of children uh, ranging from preschool to sixth grade, found that children learn best in environments that are conductive to play. Now, the MyPlate exhibit already is teaching kids about healthy food choices, so it was our goal and to increase the level of play that would help give the children a better environment to learn those healthy food choices. Now, the, we defined this need uh, that was given to us by the Purdue Exhibit Design Center from research that was done by the Coles Museum, uh, Cole Children's Museum of Greater Chicago, where 163 <laughs> Association of Children's Museum members were surveyed 
And these museum professionals and uh, curators gave feedback on what they viewed as the most important aspects of their exhibits and their children's museums. And as you can see, overwhelming responses to one of the questions which asked about multi-sensory exhibit components. And the majority of the answers were given that they preferred exhibits that involve touching and seeing and viewing. Now the current MyPlate exhibit already has aspects of uh, visuals with their graphics and also the text that is involved with that. Uh, and some aspects of touch as well where kids can come up and uh, look at boards and things like that. But we wanted to add it, they, they were hoping to add another level of interactivity uh, that involved more touching uh, for, the, for the children who will be coming to see this exhibit. So then we then asked, how do touch-based interactive games effectively reinforce learning in free choice environments? And this question, then led us to our hypothesis, which says if Purdue Exhibit Design Center uses more touch interactives, then the participants' knowledge gained from the MyPlate exhibit will be reinforced. Now, after we took our initial research, we then started in developing our products. Now, when we first started this project, we had a few core features that we wanted to implement in our game. We knew where the exhibit or where this interactive was going to be in the exhibit. Section, and thus we would have kind of a focus on calcium. Uh, we knew that we wanted to emulate a checkout lane, like in a typical grocery store. Um, we we would we would have food items that would come from left to right across the screen. Players would touch on the food items, and if they were calcium rich, then their score would go up. Because we had such a focus on Calcium, we decided to call the game Check Out Your Calcium. Um, now here's Reed for some of our concepts. So to visually develop uh, this project, we made some concept art. This entailed storyboards to imagine the gameplay itself, um, different styles of the food items, and really concepts for the rest of the design of the interactive itself. Um, to, to also help visualize, we created a 3D model of where the interactives will be placed in the section of the MyPlate exhibit. And as you can see, the secondary screen is propped up so that it's probably going to be the first thing that everyone sees or notices in the exhibit. Um, with our second iteration we developed, we uh, found some requirements from the sponsor. And one of those requirements was to use the five MyPlate USDA standard colors, which are the primary and secondary colors, excluding yellow. Um, secondly, we were to use art styles, which were already used um, in the surrounding exhibit um, that entailed using outlined illustrations and minimum shading and highlights. During this iteration, we also developed an introduction screen and a countdown and a milk cup animation. As the users select the food items, correct food items, the milk cup will raise, will rise up. Also, the background of the, of the food items uh, corresponds with the color of the MyPlate group it's associated with. So as you can see, steak is blue as protein is associated with code blue. Now, after much more research, um, a couple more iterations, and testing, we developed this final iteration. Um, after after um, seeing feedback from the testing, we noticed that not many people were really noticing the instructions on the introduction screen. So we added this introduction, uh, instructional screen to kind of force them to see it. Um, we also added a bonus round, which will be discussed further in just a little bit. And we redesigned the secondary screen with uh, adding the calcium content of each food as it's selected and a reinforcing great job or try again. Now the secondary screen um, during the introduction and instructional screens was also added to be a bright yellow. So I find that, find that bright yellow evokes energy and joy. We found that in an article in Smashing Magazine on about color theory. Later in the article, it explained that cooler yellow, or um, lighter yellows evoke comfort, which is one of the main reasons we <coughs> use the color as the main background for much of the interactive. Once again, we'd like to state that the overall goal of this project was positive reinforcement of learning about calcium specifically. 
and through the calcium rich foods that's shown throughout the exhibit. Now, unlike most games today where two or more players will go head on and compete to get to the high score, we decided, and through the past experience of Jeff Rollins and the Exhibit Design Center, that this game was going to be fully cooperative. Two players will work together to reach the overall goal. We decided this because this game is going to be placed in children's museums and 4-H fairs, where the environment is most likely going to either be in teacher-student relationships, where there's a large group of students and the teacher will want them to work and learn together, or, more importantly, parent-child pairs, where the two can learn and grow together. Now, according to one of our primary sources, Mediar Nodiafshar, author of <coughs> A multi-sense approach to information reception and knowledge creation and learning, our brain is wired to use most, if not all, our primary senses in the learning process. Another one of our major contributors is Sean Gallagher, contributor to the Encyclopedia of Human-Computer Interaction, who states, we don't simply open our eyes and look around. We are more inclined to grab things, use them, and see how they work. Because of these, we, just, we wanted to make the entire exhibit and our game specifically based around touch and visuals. Now this full-on hands-on interaction is going to be using a multi-touch screen. Originally, uh, players would use full LED scanners to scan in the items, much like a checkout counter, which we're trying to replicate. And the graphics would have barcodes attached to them. But due to safety issues such as the lasers and the weight of the object, we decided instead of a child being able to possibly bring harm to his or herself or others, in future iterations we will be using a lightweight, possibly plastic scanner replica that uses a stylus tip so the player will still be able to scan in objects using the stylus at the end. Now, as said before, Children learn best in an environment that also encourages play. So visually, this entire interaction and the exhibit is based around a fun, lighthearted, but still learnable environment. Our actual graphics in the game, to avoid text whenever possible, we base the food items going through an approved list of foods from the Exhibit Design Center. And we base them around common items and foods that can be recognized without having to label anything. Even the yogurt item used in the game, which is still labeled just for clarity, still uses the shape and colors commonly associated with the Yoplait brand of yogurts. So even children who are target demographic, which may not be able to read at this point, could still recognize the item and it being calcium rich. And we'll now turn to a live demo of our game. We're just gonna show a quick product demo. So on the screen, we're projecting what's on the multi-touch table. Um, this is just the same thing that you would see on the multi-touch screen. The laptop is being used to see the secondary screen.
speed up a little bit. And then once you finish the game, you'll get this bonus round where tons of objects will spawn. You just have to hit as many as you can. Now, the game ends when you reach 10 high calcium items when you scan <coughs> We had two choices. The first choice would have been to actually conduct testing with children within our target population to see if they actually do consider this a fun game, and even if they, uh, you know, even if learning was reinforced, we could do that through surveys or through other testing. But due to some restrictions with the institutional review board um, and the restrictions around testing with children in schools, uh, we went with our second option, which was to have the professional opinions through surveys of professionals who have worked with children in the uh, exhibit, children's exhibit area and with the Purdue Exhibit Design Center. Uh, we took some professionals who are within the Agricultural Communications Department here at Purdue and they gave us some professional feedback uh, after playing the game. And we asked them a series of questions. One of the first one being, this interactive added to your understanding of the exhibit content, which uh, as you can see, we had all positive results with our range of answers being in, um, we ranked it from a rating of six to one, strongly agreed being a six, strongly disagreed being a one, uh, one and positive range being from six to through four. And our second question that we asked was this interactive was easy to use. And again, we can see that we had a majority answer and with a positive response. Third question being, this interactive should be simple enough for any child in pre-K through eight to use. And again, we received positive feedback in this question as well. Question four, this interactive was enjoyable to use. Again, most of our participants agreed with this question, with this statement. And question five, this interactive was consistent with the MyPlay exhibit and reinforced its information. And we received all positive feedback in this statement. Now with each of our questions, we took our average responses based off of that ranking from six to one and calculated the average response for each of our questions. And the average responses we received, again, were all within that positive range of six through four. And we also calculated um, for any possible future statistics of a confidence interval, interval based off the results we had. And we can say with 95% confidence that they would fall within these ranges as some of the upper and lower limits, and even the upper and lower limits fall within that positive range. So we can say with 95% confidence that based off of our tar target population who answered these survey questions would answer with a positive, positive answer. So these were the best results that we could get, and based off of that, we understood that we had a positive result where professionals could use this game as successful and could be effective and be goal that we had for it to be in the Purdue Exhibit Design Center's exhibit, and now we will uh, be talking about what's next for it and conclude. So now that you have a better understanding of our product, you might be wondering, you know, what's next or what's the big idea? Well, the fact is, is that uh, interactives are becoming a key part of exhibits and to teach and entertain their audience. Our game, Check Out Your Calcium, will be one such uh, interactive for the MyPlate exhibit. It will travel to various children's museums and events like the Indiana State Fair, where it will be seen by tens of thousands of children and parents. Thank you all for coming to our presentation today. Uh, we will now be accepting questions.
screen so that multiple children play at once, or is it just one screen at a time? Well, this, as you saw from one of the views, that um, this screen will actually be on the table uh, within the exhibit, will lay flat, and that part of the exhibit you can stand on one side and the other, so that two kids can play one from one end, one from the other end. Um, so it would be a max of two. Um, as for anything beyond that, we haven't tested anything with multiple test screens. Um, you could get, maybe get it to work with putting them together, uh, perhaps to get more people. And it will work with multiple people because this is a multi-touch uh, monitor. So, you know, you can be, multiple people can be uh, touching at the same time and it'll still receive input. What's the max number of simultaneous uh, touches that can, it can register? With this screen, two. That's just a limit based off of the screen and the operating system that we're running it on. Um, but with higher technology now, there are ones that can run multiple ones. So up to, you know, we've seen ones that are up to 10 at a time. So you could get more if you uh, increase the technology with that. Was there a score printed out at the end there? I noticed you had a bonus round or whatever, but I, I, don't, I might have missed the score screen shows up on the secondary monitor. I'm, I'm sorry, okay. it's kind of small, but okay. that's, you saw the, the picture of the milk glass mm -hmm. in our right. development pictures, and the milk glass will fill up as you get calcium rich items. Okay. And that was another thing with our, our sponsors. We knew that we just want to add to a collaborative sense so that we don't want it to be competitive that right. I go ahead and higher, higher score than these people. So we opted against showing an actual score of you receive this amount of number. Through the testing, did you receive any uh, feedback or comments about the necessity of the value of the second screen versus uh, limiting it to one screen? Was there a really positive response to two screens? Do you, do you know? To be honest, when people came up, they saw the first, the flat, the touch screen first, and they played through that. And most of them, they only noticed the secondary screen after they had played through the game completely. So our hopes would be that people who come up interact, maybe perhaps they're watching a kid play it while they're standing in line, then they might see this, the screen and notice the uh, change in colors. Because it is a very bright yellow, so yeah. it's hard, hard to miss. So. Yeah. Uh, part of it is, uh, this is kind of an awkward setup, but what we're planning on doing is when this is built into the exhibit, it's going to be built into, like, it's going to have um, like actual mounts, and it's going to be, uh, yeah, that 45 degree angle, the secondary screen. So whenever you come up, you're gonna be able to see this, but you'll also have that secondary screen right there, which will be a lot easier to uh, notice than the setup we have right now. Primary colors, I understand you stipulated by the MyPlate system. Um, what about alternate color modes for colorblind participants? Any thought given to that? Um, that is a very good question. Um, and we uh, didn't put a whole lot of research into that. So that would be something that um, another group uh, could possibly research that. Yeah, in the back. Um, you had to summarize about your study overall, not about the participants. The you actually participate in the um, interactive game, but for you, what, how would you summarize what you actually learned from this project? Um, there's, there's a whole lot that, of consideration and research that needs to be put into children and how they view games and how they view learning. Um, you know, us as adults, it's easy for us to evaluate, you know, how, you know, a lot of us would play video games so then we would know how we would interact with it. But with a kid, a child, there's so many things with sound, color, that go into that that have to be taken into account. So um, you really have to break it down um, to the very basic level to see and to validate, you know, why you would have each little part of it. So okay. Something else that we learned is we, we had a lot of technical challenges. Um, for instance, this is two separate SWIFT files that we had to figure out how to get the two SWIFT files to communicate with each other. Um, 
an update. Uh, we also um, had a lot of questions on how we were going to remove things and how we were going to, uh, you know, like if you selected a right choice over a wrong choice, how we were going to reinforce that that was a right or wrong choice. And there's a lot of research that went into that, which is something that, you know, before I came into this, I never even realized that we had to put that much thought into it. Actually, getting it to support the touch screen itself didn't take all that long once we had the game created already. Um, Flash actually made it surprisingly easy to get touch input working. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'd say development time overall, maybe maybe two weeks if, if you were working like full time on it. Um, going to be part of the um, it's going to be part of the case but it does it does happen um, exhibit uh, screens do get broken and that's the reason why there's always a backup so they have a backup and we can just easily if something does break uh, the EDC has a contingency plan and as far as I know there would be like a, a sheet of glass yeah. that would be also put on top of that so an extra layer of durability as the kids are hitting it and touching it um, and that was a question we go for a bigger, more expensive monitor, um, or something that's cheaper that could easily be replaced if, if need be. So. Uh, first, I want to reiterate uh, how great your presentation looked. I think the slides were fantastic, and thanks for using Prezi and not PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, I guess what I wonder is what you learned working on this project that, that you feel most equipped you now for those of you who are graduating here in another week or two and going out looking for jobs, what about this project do you think will give you the most confidence in, in meeting with uh, potential employers and then, and then perhaps uh, potential clients? Mm -hmm. What one or two segments of this process do you think best has suited you for that? Yeah, good question. I think one of the most interesting things I got to do for this project was just making use of a touch screen. Um, I've never been around touch screens before, like they've been around for a while, but I've never actually used one for something that I was creating. Um, so that that was, that's probably the number one thing that I would take out of this, is just the experience of working with the touch screen. Yeah. And I know for myself, I did less of the back end with actually coding. A lot of more of my side was as being put, part, put as group leader with a lot of management. So the biggest thing I took out of it was management and leadership skills and supervision of just how to work with people because this was a semester long project. Yes, it had a lot of ups and downs and required a lot of, um, you know, re like, like changing things on the fly and just managing a whole lot of aspects because we had other parts of the class that we had to take care of as well, not just 
producing a product, but developing a paper and having the research as well. And also managing just having people skills to make sure that you know the task is getting done. Um, so this even that can be translated to project management or something that uh, I find very helpful. Oh well, I, I guess for me it was just the research. I mean, it was uh, you know I guess whenever as CGT students we work on a project, we just kind of say, okay, we're going to make something and it looks good, but we don't back up why it looks good very often. Even though sometimes we try in this, we really had to back up a lot of what we had to do. And in doing that, I feel like we ended up with a much better product. And community, that was, that was a big learning for me. Yeah, yeah going with what Jeremy said, definitely, um, all the research that I know now that it takes to develop products, um, I acted as an art director, so I never got to develop artwork throughout the whole game process <coughs> do the concept art and help to work with Peter to create all the other art, set, art assets and just overseeing like him developing his art was really beneficial for me. Um, pretty much compounding on what those two said, going into games and theory, it was really fascinating and a big learning experience to just look into all the research we did, especially into how our demographic, in this case, very young children, are going to react to what we think is a perfectly logical explanation. We go, okay, let's let's um, let's have this sound effect. Okay, why? How is that going to affect our demographic? Very simple um, statements can open up a lot of information and a lot of questions. And if you get to answer those questions, you can further reach your demographic and bring a whole new experience to them. I think that's all great, but I was writing some notes down when you guys were talking. And in this order, you guys during the presentation talked about it. Ideas, concept art, storyboards, prototypes, attention to customers' feedback and iteration. Mm -hmm. That's outstanding from a group of college seniors. I've worked with people in the industry for 15 to 20 years that don't get that. You guys have client and customer relationships down and you don't even realize that you just presented to us in the perfect order. That is an amazing thing to make in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's true. Yes. When you asked if a member of the committee um, that sat with Jeff in the development of the exhibit, I just want to tell you thank you because as I stood and watched last year um, as the exhibit was in play at the State Fair, it's the interactives um, that keep people in the exhibit, that keep them from walking by, that bring them in, so that we are actually delivering the education that we want to deliver, and it enhances their experience in the exhibit and draws them into the knowledge about Purdue Extension. So I'm just really thankful for the work that you've done and the professionalism that you've exhibited in both of you. Now that you don't have to follow the uh, IAB's testing insanity, can't you just find some brothers or sisters or neighborhood kids to test this on? I, I think that's the one thing. I, you guys are brilliant. I've been doing this for 15 years. This is outstanding presentation. The one thing for me that's missing is you don't have a fourth grader to play with this. Right. And I think you miss that. And mm -hmm. I think that you would take, you would be brilliant in taking their feedback and then putting that into play. Yeah, it's too bad you couldn't get to that. Yeah, um, that, that's a big takeaway that um, we realized, I think, too late that in developing our, our products, you know, it, it doesn't need to be something that we would publish because if you, you know, if you take something from somebody, it has to be through the IRB standards and everything, but even just for our personal knowledge and for our personal just even feedback for developing it.
definitely something that they thought about and could easily be a, a legacy project. Mm -hmm. And you know something, Senator Summit, I just thought of to your question and throw it back. Um, we've been in contact with one of the local high schools to try and take this to dem demonstrate it and to also give kind of a rundown of the CDC program in some ways, a promo for us to give back uh, to the program. And I just heard back actually today from uh, the art teacher from that class who she mentioned that she does have some children in her art classes within that demographic. So um, hopefully sometime next week we'll be able to take this and demonstrate it. So it's not something that will, it'll probably be too late for anything to go into the necessarily the paper, of course, for us to present, but it would be something if this was to be a legacy project, would give a lot of good feedback. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Research question, you said learning. Define learning. Learning would be them receiving new information. Which receiving or retaining? Receiving, but our goal was to help them retain information How and reinforce it. it. We weren't able to do that because we weren't able to test on children. No, but I mean, even on your, on your experimental population. How, how did you gain your learning in any way with them? Um, I mean, they already have the knowledge, so we asked the question of the calcium choices and all the low calcium choices. And for instance, if someone walks up and they see this graphic and they look at it, they're probably going to do a lot better at the game. But if they don't look, and so the people who we surveyed, um, they are aware of this, that this is the type of environment that this interaction is going to be. And what we were asking was, would this, in your opinion, you know, reinforce that learning that's already happening sure. from the exhibit? And we received almost overwhelmingly positive answers on that. So it sounds like the experiment would be uh, people allowed to interact with that in the exhibit and then another group not allowed to interact with it. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. And then you have some post major um, possible contribution to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. How old is it? What is it, nine year old? What's your month old? Yeah. Um, well, we're that, was, that was something we actually we did research and we looked into and we're gonna have to uh, we talked with our sponsor and MB. Uh, they will need to build a stool or something that they can step up to actually how tall the versus the putting it lower and not allowing adults to interact. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. The two options would be either take the existing table and cut it down, or to add a stool system that maybe you could have it at half of it. The child can step up, and if the parent wanted to step up next to it, they won't have the stool at their feet to worry about. And so mapping it horizontal is a client. They also do the checkout counter thing, or was that your thing? That's, that's like the initial idea for the game. And client yeah, okay. as well. well that's, that, that was kind of what was given to us when we started. I noticed in the beginning that you had a, uh, an elevation view of the, of the checkout counter with the scanner, and then I noticed in the actual game, it was a bird's eye view, an aerial view. Right. Why? Because oh. you can see that the screen is on the middle of the bench, and we wanted it to be accessible from Well, I'm both. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm your, your track scene, your track screen is a side view. Oh, well, that's that's like the introductory screen. Right. Just like somebody will come up and they'll see the start button, and so, they just, that's not part of the gameplay. I know, but, but why do that? Why I told this one? The no, second why, one have that why have an introductory screen? Why have an introductory screen? Elevation side view. Why? That was kind of helped to visualize that it was a checkout lane. I mean, it was just another perspective to show that. I mean, that's why the background. Okay, so you assume there's a, a cognitive transition from that child's eye view to that bird's eye view to know mm -hmm. that that's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Did you find anything that helped you make that decision? Um, besides the client input, no. Okay. Does, doesn't having a start button on that side view, it doesn't having a side view screen and a start button on the screen break the paradigm of wanting to be able to make it accessible from all angles, though? 
Is there yeah, a we, we did, yeah, we did talk about that, but uh, after talking with our sponsor, he said that most likely they'd be coming from one dominant side, so they just have to face that one side. Why the music? Um, just researching, it's like it's lighthearted and it's energetic. Is that lighthearted music? Well, energetic. I mean, is there a the category kids. where you say lighthearted music and say, well, that one? touch it and it didn't feel like you were touching it. Like uh, it you know it didn't feel like it was reacting to you sure. and it was it was kind of taking away from the interactive. So that's why we decided to add that little shake to kind of make it feel like you are touching it, but it's, it's obviously like something not right. And, and probably the million dollar question for me and Jeff kind of answered is it fun? I think for for us it was fun once we added the bonus round. That was really when you get that that, that, that free for all aspect of just like oh, almost like that game where you have to get those little squirrels where yeah, yeah 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 so I mean the ground was really yeah the ground was yeah balls yeah and just little little works and little things that we added on with that like the aspect of the sh the hitting five in a row the, the street that that added some level of enjoyment and I think, to it. I think what Jeff said really helped me too is that they would sit there and poke at it aimlessly for hours right. variables of the color overlap, you know, like the broccoli thing. Yeah. You, 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 or, well, I guess it's broccoli. Yeah. There actually were a couple of things that people commented, like, I don't really understand what that is. 
friend that uh, yeah, someone didn't recognize what the peanut butter jar was, yeah. which okay. to us we thought was pretty obvious. Yeah, I but peanut butter. I, I, I recognize it. Yeah. yeah, but some people perhaps it, it was a, it might have been a combination of it going too fast for them to really see it clearly to so, understand it. So the so so the variables are the color issue. Color issue. The color variables are speed mm -hmm. of, to recognition. The variable yeah. is geometry. Yeah. Is it an appropriate symbol? Yeah. And in those areas, you feel comfortable with what you did based not on just your opinion, yes. but on data you discovered, right? Yes. Okay. And we did receive feedback like the, the tofu at first was came up with so it what looked like ice cubes with chopsticks. And they are just like, well, I don't know what that is. So then we had to clearly say, like, it needs to have tofu, it needs to have some word tofu on it so that people can read that. And so okay. something to that effect. Why, why would that be included in this? Because it's high calcium. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a food. Rock's not a food. Well, right. I have looked at a lot of the items, a lot of them are kind of items who don't necessarily associate with calcium. Okay. So they're trying to promote um, items that are not associated, and so it's okay. kind of odd, and tofu's one of them. So, so is the tofu industry funding this development? <laughs> <laughs> timers uh, that if there's no contact, it'll always go back to the start screen. So we thought about that too. 